Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery. Anthony here, and in this video, I'm going to give you my review of the K and K uh, Jet Six SV Veins, and um, we're going to be going through my whole experience with them, and I'm going to be providing you with some like testing information to show you, you know, what I experienced, but with with, with some numbers or at least a, vidu a visual uh, showing you what's going on in my experience uh, using and testing these veins. So first off, uh, my experience with these veins are, well, they're fast and they're easy to install, but most importantly, they're very quick, or at least they're very quick compared to other uh, vein brands, especially designed for outdoor arrows and long distance shooting. So with that, I wanted to figure out are they faster than other brands on the market? Or are they, you know, just the same average and it's just because I'm shooting something new that I'm getting this perception that these arrows are flying faster with these veins? Well, I went and did a chronograph test comparing this arrow to one of the other leading brands on the market. Um, I'm going to leave them unnamed because I intend on doing a more thorough video with a, hopefully countless other brands in the future. You know, you know, provided of course of uh, I get your support and you know the support from the community uh, to do this, and then I'll be more than happy to go ahead and test uh, the SV veins against other brands more directly. But since this is just a review, uh, the other veins that I'm using will just be the generic brand. If you guys can guess that, then that's fine. But uh, first off, speed. So when we shot the Jet 6 SV vein through the chronograph, uh, this was with my fingers, by the way, uh, it came in at 201 feet per second. Now that's pretty impressive, especially since I am only pulling 46 pounds. Now it was time to test uh, the generic vein. Now this vein went through the chronograph at 196 feet per second. Um, same bow, same arrow, same everything. The only difference was the vein. Uh, it was also shot at 46 pounds. It was also shot with my fingers. So with that we notice we have a 5 feet per second difference in uh, the two veins. So it kind of proved to me that, okay, Maybe I am noticing a speed difference. Now, if you do the math, it's barely over 1%. Uh, in most things, you would actually probably just round it down to 1% because it's not even 1.5%. It's barely over 1% if you take those two numbers and figure out the percentage of difference between the two. So I was like, hmm, maybe there's some margin for error here. You know, I am only human. Well we need to go and do a walk back test. I'm going to shoot uh, the SV veins and a generic vein, the same brand of generic veins, uh, from 18, 30, and 70 meters. So at 18 meters, shot the two arrows, boom, boom. As you can see, I went down and measured it. And every time there was roughly uh, two and a half inches or six centimeters difference between the height from the SV vein to the lower generic vein. Yes, the SV veins did fly higher. Nothing was changed. Same weight of bow. Everything's exactly the same from the chronograph test. Still shooting with my fingers. Still uh, shooting 46 pounds. So from 18 meters, I went, all right, let's see if there's something different at 30. You know, maybe the SV veins, they're, maybe they're, they're, they're flattening out, they're smoothing out, uh, they're taking the vibration out sooner. Because as you've seen in slow motion videos from other companies and other places, arrows flex a lot in flight. And one of the advertising points of the SV veins is their design allows them to fly straighter, faster. You know, they, it takes the wiggle out of the arrows sooner. So in my mind, I went, hmm, maybe they're good or a little bit better than the average arrow 
at a shorter distance and maybe uh, their, dis their uh, advantages there are diminished when you go back to uh, like a longer range. Maybe it just kind of, you know, washes out. Well, at 30 meters, as you can see, we shot the SV vein, followed by the lower generic vein. Again, uh, only two and a half inches difference between the two or six centimeters. Now at this point, I was like, all right, I don't know if 70's worth it, but you know what, we should give it a try. Um, especially since the land, you know, the grade of the land I'm standing on in that area from 18 to 30, my 30 meter standing position is actually lower than my standing position at 18, so that may have had some influence. Let's go to 70. Um, it's about in the same grade or same line as um, my 18 meter position and my target bail. Yeah, my, my, my property dips a little and then it comes back up. You know, I, I'm not in charge of the land. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is what it is. So let's try 70 meters. Let's see what happens. And boom, as you can see, the SV vein coming right in to the center of the target at 70 meters, followed by the generic vein well below it. Now I walked down and measured this and I got on average 12 inches difference between the generic vein and the SV vein and that works out to about 30 centimeters. Now that's a big difference and in a way I was kind of expecting to see that but also not really expecting to see that because my feeling was is that the way the SV veins are designed with that extra curve in them to help them smooth out quicker so they're not flexing as much. I figured that was just going to be a short-term gain thing. Uh, you know, not a, not a long-term gain where you're actually gaining several rings of height off of just changing your veins because nothing else on this bow changed. The arrows didn't change, nothing, and I'm still shooting it with my fingers. So with that, I was pretty confident that there were noticeable performance differences uh, with the SV veins compared to your uh, generic vein that I was testing it against. Uh, therefore, you know, pretty much confirming my perception of shooting this arrow and it seeming like it flew a lot faster than uh, other veins. So I was really happy that the information did back up uh, my original analysis and original experience with these arrows and with these veins. Now, for vein sizes, um, earlier in the year I was shooting 2 inch SV veins. Um, I have recently gone to uh, the inch and 3 quarters. I, I do find them to perform a little bit better, especially at the long ranges. Of course, we're entering indoor season now by the time I film this, and it probably makes more sense to go back to a 2-inch SV vein because, well, we're indoors, so the more stability, the merrier. Um, of course, if you want to go too much larger than that, you probably just want to look at the shark veins by K&K uh, uh, &K Archery because those are definitely designed for uh, indoor arrows. Next up, I want to talk about uh, the tape. Uh, there's some ridiculous tape on these veins. Now, you're probably thinking, Anthony, it's tape, but tape does matter because it, it holds down your veins, and if they're not going to stay in place, then what's the point of having veins, and what's the point of spending all this time installing the, vein, uh, installing the tape to stick the veins on, to tape the veins down, to shoot them if they're only going to come off especially if they're going to come off in like the next couple of days. And I've, I've, I've had brands where their tape doesn't stick well. Uh, this brand is definitely not the case. And I'll demonstrate it more than just me shaking this arrow with a, a vein on it already. We're going to actually do a, a live you know, test right here uh, in this video. I got a nice bear shaft here. And I have some K&K &K tape. So I'm going to take a piece off here. I'm going to stick it onto uh, this bear shaft and I don't know we're not gonna do anything special just gonna do it straight line right down the bear shaft uh, might be curved a little and that's why we use 
a uh, fletching jig, everybody. And then once I can get it off this arrow, voila, there it is. I'll stick my finger to it. And now I can shake the arrow with my finger attached to it. Uh, you can't do this with a lot of veins, or if you can, uh, it will, it'll, it'll come unsticked, uh, unstuck, unstuck before you know it. So uh, this is a huge positive. The tape for these arrows is so good. I have seen top archers in the U.S. actually go and buy <laughs> just the tape off of people so they can use that with their other brands of veins because the tape is so superior. And um, there's other tests and things that I've noticed throughout the season that also add to this. Uh, I've been to some really hot tournaments this year and throughout all of them on the field of play I have not had a single issue with tape and arrows uh, and their veins coming unglued from each other. Now I did test it out where I put my arrows into my bow case, into uh, a hot, my hot rental car in the sun in Texas. Um, the outside temperature was somewhere around 100 degrees and I did the same thing in, in other states too such as Florida and things like that. Uh, it's extremely hot in these places uh, you know close to or around 100 degrees the arrows are fine in the outdoors I've had no problems there but when you're when they're inside your car all cooped up and it's about you know maybe 130 plus inside your car because you know all that all that heat's trapped so it's just building in there you know to an extent um, there is some minor movement in the veins but uh, but at that point uh, it's unsafe for humans in those conditions so uh, it's still pretty impressive that uh, the veins and tape were able to, to hold on. They did move a little bit, and that you know that's something to note. Of course, that's a, a, that's an extreme extreme condition, and uh, I would not recommend shooting at like 130 degrees. <laughs> now you're probably thinking, as this arrow still holds on to my finger with this tape, well, the great Anthony, the tape sticks well to the arrows. But how often am I going to have to refletch these? Well, the kind of like two things. One, how good are your groups? Because if you shoot great groups, basically regardless of the veins, you're going to beat them up. I do find that these veins are more durable uh, than a majority of the veins out there. And yes, I have not tried all the veins on the market. Hopefully I can get to a point where I've tried the vast majority of them. But uh, they are some very hardy veins. Basically, as long as you're not getting hard creases in them, uh, they're going to fly great. Uh, you don't have to worry about them tearing. Uh, they're definitely too strong for that. Uh, if you do tear them, then you want to replace them because you don't want to shoot with, with torn veins. Uh, for me, though, personally, I have a set of practice and tournament arrows. For my tournament arrows, I believe I fletched them twice for the entire outdoor season and for my practice arrows uh, I, I think I also only fletched them twice <laughs> I don't know if that says too much about my shooting but at the same point in time most of the time I was shooting 10 practice arrows at a, you know at, per set at 70 meters and there was some there's some solid collisions and for some of those arrows I did have to replace either single veins or all three, but at no point did I have to refletch the entirety of all my arrows because they were just that busted up uh, within a short period of time. Uh, I definitely got good value and good life out of them. I know some other brands on the market, uh, at least from my experience in the past, every single tournament I went to, I had to refletch. Um, I had to refletch basically every two to three weeks. Uh, leading up to and after all those tournaments, um, it was a lot of work and it was, you know, I, I was getting the feeling that all I was doing was refletching and that wasn't cool. So uh, overall though, I think, I think they do have a great durability. Are they the strongest veins out there? Maybe, uh, maybe not. Um, you know, I have not tested that. I just know from my experience and from using other veins and just talking to other people about their brands of veins that they've used. 
Um, it seems like uh, the K&K &K Jet 6 SV veins really do come close to or are at the top for durability. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this review. Yes, <laughs> this arrow is still sticking to my finger. And I, I've been filming this for quite a while, and it's even bouncing. It, it's still stuck there. It's, it's basically super glue, but in a tape strip. <laughs> um, at this point, I don't know if it'll ever come off. I'll see you guys at the next tournament with this arrow still attached to me. Uh, but other than that, I really do hope you enjoyed this testing video. Um, if everybody really likes what's going on here, uh, and there's, there's good support for this, like if you guys share this video, and let me know, you know what you think. Like if there's more tests you want me to do, let me know. I have some in the back of my mind where in the future I can test um, like Jet 6 veins versus other companies like, um, like Brady's veins or X, uh, Spider veins, X-Wings, um, Spin Wings. There's a ton of veins on the market. There's, there's actually more than I ever thought there was. <laughs> I figured there was about a, about a half dozen, but there's, 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 there's a couple dozen different veins on the market, some you never heard of, and I can go through testing some of these against each other as groups and see uh, you know, what is the best vein. And this is going to allow not only me, but you guys to see you know, what vein you wanna put your hard earned dollars on or what vein you think is going to provide uh, you know, what you need. Maybe you're fine with the veins you have and you don't need a vein that, you know, that flies a little faster and higher when it's on your arrows. That's up to you, but I'm just here trying to provide that information. So hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, at no time was I sponsored or uh, you know, supported to make this video by k, k Archery. Probably should have said that earlier in the video. But as, as you know, I have no sponsors and this is all ran thanks to uh, the generosity of the people that view this content. So thank you so much. Um, I'm always trying to do more for you guys. Let me know what else I can do for you. And as always, happy shooting. And don't forget to uh, check out K&K's website for more information on this product.